So this live stream is carrying on from where we were at with like the chat and our previous uh, JJ Lin live stream. Um, hopefully this sounds okay to you. I'm going to leave it in its like unaltered format to go live on YouTube just for the sake of having it all sorted in like in terms of its like engineering and everything like that. Um, but we're going to look through the end of the lyrics for um, Raindrops. We're up to track number nine in the album review. And uh, then we're going to continue here, okay? Um, so we'll go, we've got the, these are the lyrics for Raindrops. We've got um, the weeping willows drift in the jasmine rain accompanying the late night flute. The words on the declaration is all you. The detailed phrases, the drifted characters, the, son of the silent person. The autumn wind from the end of spring sand. I thought it was you outside the lonely window. Um, but I don't know. I don't think I've seen this. Oh, no, because this is track 10. What am I doing? So if you're watching this, basically, um, this is the second part, the final part of the JJ Lin album review that I was doing the live stream on, uh, on yesterday, as of this going out, this is going up on Sunday. I just wanted to get these last two tracks done so that um, people didn't feel like I was kind of half-assing it. I wanted this to be a full review. I don't know what the hell is up with my internet. I'm going to reset the router. But anyways, we've got track 10, which is, um, yeah, it's about, it's raindrops. So we're going to listen through that now. Sounding very, very kind of somber, isn't it, immediately with these kind of vocal ba backings. I think that this sort of downturn from the previous track we had, which was very upbeat, I think, whoa, just shows the kind of how I, I'm sort of unsure about the, um, the way that this track, this album has been structured, you know? The little synth flutters on the sides there going between the edges of the stereo field is beautiful though. The portamento bass on the low end is uh, filling up it, it up really well. It's a great developmental device. Yeah, great use of uh, alternate percussion, handing it on the sides there. Very somber sounding with those sort of traditional elements there. I think there might have been like a, um, like an Uruhu or something like that that he's got there. Great reverb tails to the sort of snare or sort of the rim hits alongside the double tracking of the vocals, you know? And the guitar is nice and bright as well in the mix. Ah, oh, great, a major left at the end, that's really sweet. I'm liking the, the eccentricity of the hi-hat hits as well, how busy they are. Ah, oh, and the backing vocals are charming. And those tails on the sides there, wonderful. 
flickering off into the ether. Not sure about the shimmery scent though, because like it sounds a little bit too sort of spooky for my tastes there. I really need to know how the lyrics went in order to be able to have like a final opinion on that. Just realize I've had lyrics time on the whole time, dude. Very used to the strings though. Yeah, very spooky reverb of towers on here, very atmospheric and kind of like grim sounding. I wish that um the Jason Mraz song had a bit of this darkness within it, you know? I think finishing on that high note was a smart move. Yeah, exactly. Finishing on the the tippity top of that range of the piano there, you know, is beautiful. Um, it's sensational. Like, the guy's got away with words uh, for the most part, at least from what I've heard. And also, it's just the way that he, exp that he expresses himself, not only through his voice, but also through the instrumentation, like the different piano parts and everything like that is sensational. And we've got the Weeping Willow Drift and the Jasmine Rain accompanying the Late Night Flute. Yeah, see, this, this kind of matches with the overall aesthetic of the motif there. The words on the declaration is all you, the detailed phrasings, the drifting characters, the silent person, the autumn wind from the end of spring sand, I thought it was you outside the lonely window, the story has traveled many times, waiting for the end, I hesitate and sigh softly. Um, softly play a song of leaving, name it Jasmine Rain. The flower petals fall in the garden, cutting off the past, and I wallow my feelings, raising my cup to welcome the drunken feeling. I've just realized that I stopped the stream. Yeah. The autumn wind from the end of spring sand and the song How Much of Pain is Related to You. Softly play a song of leaving, still loving you since fate allowed it, you left. Softly play a song of leaving. Um, I wallow in my feelings, raising my cup to welcome the drunken feeling. So like, just to be clear, this is Vincent Fang's lyrics. I don't know if they're a literal translation, but like these kind of old timey, the cup of emotion and everything like that, the well of emotions in there. Equivocating it to like nature and everything like that is a wonderful thing. I love when Vincent Fang does his work, especially for Jay Chow. Um, it's like, a, it can, compares to a romance, but then it's also like talking about, um, you know, like the house that they're in and the lonely window and everything. Like there's lovely imagery in here that really does help this track to shine. It is a shame that this track doesn't get as much love as the pre other stuff on the album, as I feel like that it's an equal uh, quality in regards to the songwriting musicianship and just as good with the vocals if not better than a lot of the stuff on the album but nonetheless i'm nonetheless appreciative of it um it's great to hear vincent fang work with other musicians i'm really happy about that but uh we've got the last track for today um the beacon shing shing um just gonna like make a little note here um currently uh, currently recording the last two tracks of the album review. It'll go back up. Go up. Up tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's, it's a, my internet router. Thanks to everyone who came to the live stream. Yeah. Okay. So then we've got the final track as well today. The Beacon. Um, let's go. What do we got? Make that big for you. Oh, it's very spooky again. Continuation of the previous track with the beacon. What are we doing in this last half of the album, guys? It's wild. I think there's just some sort of spooky synth. It's said spooky a lot. Some kind of unusual synth sounds. But a pretty vocal line for sure. I'm 
I'm glad that it was experimenting with different EDM textures. I think that was a charming decision to make here. The bass line is so full sounding, it's wonderful dude. break there bring things out and kind of allowing it to sit you know i like how the piano is such a delicate sort of sub layer in relation to the vocals but the kind of sort of sequence is kind of warbling around the sides little string shimmers lots of attention to detail within this one for sure Yeah, great, great transition there. The, the studio production is solid, for sure. Yeah, great. I don't know how this represents any of the previous material on the album, but that's why I'm one big gripe from this album is I don't understand why he made the album like this. Why did he choose the topics he did? Why did he choose the um, styles he did? Why was it so random and dispersed throughout? We've had his big moment, the vocals rising high, you know. Excellent. Sensational stuff. I'm just finishing really prettily the vocal parts there. Big string shimmers, traditional sort of like a, like a ballad format. Hmm. He's dancing over top in the high range there. All right. Oh, goodness. It's a shame that I couldn't get all of it reviewed in one review, but to be fair, like, it was starting to get a bit long anyways. You know, I think it was just basically life telling me, hurry up, <laughs> get through these tracks quickly. But that was basically, um, you know, the last track off the album, The Beacon. If we look at the lyrics, you know, the cold day should you wear something more, uh, fireworks, bubbles, shaking, two hands desperately holding on but having no results. Um... Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Every life, I don't, we're together or not. So this is about a relationship that didn't work out. People hurting themselves. Um, I'm when I'm lonely, hoping that the world will not leave me behind. Too many unfortunate regrets. Only after we lose it. So this is a song about lost love and like the difficulties of kind of trying to maintain it and the regret that comes with that. As long as you love me, an endless line is also an eternal day. Okay, so like you know, as long as you love me, my life is worth living. Embrace the wounds. Escape from ever. Okay, all right, let's do this conclusion of this album, okay? Because I feel like it's important for me to do so. Um, basically, this album for me showcased the best of Jerry, Le Jerry Lynn's vocals that I've heard so far. He's clearly in a happy place with his technique there. We discussed like relationships, flirting, you know, his grandmother's passing, which through like gardens, which was an especially memorable one. I Am Alive, which was probably the most generic stuff I've heard from JJ Lynn yet, and I wasn't a fan of it. 
Um, I think that it's a shame that we had to have I Am Alive in this, and I think that it's a stain on an otherwise phenomenal album. I, I think that um, his vocal technique is fantastic in them at the high range there. And t- testament to this, that a lot of the stuff with like the bass, the drums, guitar, the piano, the strings, traditional elements there, the synthesizers, the sort of 808s and sub bass, etc. All the cool stuff we had in, in the surrounding arrangement was absolutely on point and pristine. Um, I think that we smashed it out of the park in the most part with a lot of these themes. Um, the track Woo is a personal highlight for me because of the activity there with um, the drums and the guitar solos, etc. But the song where we had like the with number five there, um, you know, number five, which was um, Black Keys, where we had like the kind of more experimental sort of guitar solos, a guitar and drum bits showcased and the extra kind of merits and stuff of his technique was also expl- wonderfully indicative of his talent and and composure as a performer i like the fact he had people like Ashin and vincent fang to help write lyrics because i think that they brought out the best in him he's a phenomenal singer but i think as well duets with like gm as well on track six beautiful were great because it showed how he could duet with a lady vocalist and how the ranges could intertwine it brought forward a very intimate sort of like duet between them it was fantastic to hear him over top of each of these tracks i think for the most part he managed to sound authentic and genuine even in I Am Alive, where otherwise I just don't think there were any redeeming factors for it. Uh, you know, like, clearly we're in a place with, you know, J.J. Lin as a musician where, uh, you know, like, he can write whatever he wants to. And this album is kind of stacked with all sorts of weird, unusual tracks and the spacing and timing and phrasing they are. I don't understand why this album is like it is. I don't understand the overall concept of the album. I think it was just to show different things that J.J. Lin wanted to talk about. I think it's fantastic. I think the initial track, Flashback, was cool and indicated a mood for this that was kind of disingenuous because like it, none of the rest of it was really like that. We included some sort of synthetic dubstep elements there. But we never got especially explorative throughout the rest of the track and maintained a lot of some conservative pop vibes. I think he just wanted to have the, oh, what's going to happen? It's futuristic kind of stuff. He wanted to kind of have that and also have the cake and eat it too, where he has like the traditional pop ballads and all that stuff, which harkens back to the 90s and 2000s, which still works. It's just not particularly revolutionary, and I wasn't particularly stoked that we kind of started and ended like that. And he's a great vocalist. The songs were composed well. There was lots of different tonal shifts that I discussed throughout each of the tracks there. My favorite, again, was probably um, No Black Keys, if not Woo. And the last two tracks, they were very somber affairs where, like, you know, um, Raindrops in the Beacon were, um, you know, that, that would, I can respect and appreciate what they were trying to attempt here. Um, I just think that, uh, you know, in relation to the rest, I just can't see a stylistic or tonal connection aside from relationships and losing someone and the, the sort of all that kind of stuff. So like ultimately the studio production was spectacular, commercial grade as can be expected. All the instruments sat well in the mix. Well, I think there's one track where the lead guitar was a little bit too quiet in the background, but aside from that, the rest of it was fantastic. JJ Lin always had a presence, whether it was backing vocals or collaborations or whatever. Um, you know, like he sounded very comfortable there and there was things were nicely panned in the stereo field. No weird reason the freaks is in the freaksy spectrum. There was dynamic range to this album and the tracks in general. It was nice and loud without pumping. And this is effectively my conclusion and my review of this track by, an, oh my goodness. Wow, what an absolute mess. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a bit flustered. But this is my conclusion and my review of JJ Lin with the album Genesis. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please go show us some love via the various social medias and their Spotify page, and stay cool and stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as either how more than never thought of crazy stuff going on in the world. Next uh, Saturday is going to be an SP Fan Request live stream, so I'll see you then, and spider hands out. Have a great weekend, guys. Three, two, one, boop.